World War II was a time of great innovation and invention. Some of these inventions that emerged from this conflict were groundbreaking and changed the course of history, such as the atomic bomb, the radar, the jet engine, and the computer. Others were more practical and helped the war effort in various ways, such as synthetic rubber, penicillin, nylon, and canned food. But not all the inventions of World War II were successful or sensible. Some were downright bizarre, impractical, or even ridiculous. Some of these weapons never saw the light of day, while others were actually used in combat with varying degrees of effectiveness. Some you have to see to believe. Welcome to Bizarre History. Today we deep dive into the craziest weapons that were invented during World War II. Number 9. The Panjandrum One of the most bizarre weapons of World War II was the Panjandrum, a rocket-powered device designed by the British to breach the German defenses in Normandy. The name Panjandrum was derived from a nonsense word coined by an 18th century playwright. The device consisted of two large wheels connected by a drum filled with explosives, with rockets attached to the rims of the wheels. The idea was to launch the Panjandrum toward the enemy fortifications, where it would explode and create a gap for the Allied tanks to pass through. However, the Panjandrum proved to be a disaster in practice. During its testing on an English beach in 1943, the device went out of control and veered off its intended course. The rockets started to fly off in all directions, causing panic among the observers and a dog that chased after one of them. The generals had to run for cover, and a cameraman narrowly escaped being run over by the erratic contraption. Number 8. The Goliath Tract Mine in 1940, the German Wehrmacht recovered an old remote-controlled prototype vehicle from the River Seine designed by a French engineer, Adolf Kriegrist. Inspired, the Germans began developing their own remote-controlled vehicle to serve primarily as an anti-tank weapon. The result was the Goliath Tract Mine a four-foot-long, one-foot-tall tracked vehicle capable of carrying 132 pounds of explosives. The Goliath was steered via remote control, allowing operators to drive the slow-moving vehicle under enemy tanks before detonating its payload. However, the Goliath had several drawbacks. Its remote control relied on a flimsy 2,132-foot cable connecting vehicle to operator, leaving it vulnerable to being disabled if the cable was cut. Crawling at a leisurely 6 miles per hour and with minimal ground clearance, the Goliath also risked getting stuck and its light armor left the explosive payload vulnerable. Despite its flaws, Germany produced over 7,500 Goliaths and deployed them against the Allies in Warsaw and Normandy. Though deemed largely unsuccessful, the Goliath pioneered remote-controlled weapons and even produced some amusement for U.S. soldiers who captured the quirky vehicles. Number 7. The Wind Canona among the bizarre experimental weapons devised by Nazi Germany was the Windkanone, or Wind Cannon, an anti-aircraft weapon intended to blast enemy planes from the sky using bursts of high-powered wind. This 35-foot cast iron tube was packed with an explosive ammonia-hydrogen mixture that, when detonated electrically, expelled a focused shock wave of air reaching up to 150 meters. The concept was that this air burst could deal severe disruption to low-flying aircraft, potentially even downing them. However improbable it sounds, wind cannons were tested in 1945, including one mounted defensively on a bridge over the River Elbe. But in practice, the wind cannon's wind blasts proved only mildly inconvenient to enemy planes rather than destructive. Without tangible results, the impractical wind cannon was soon abandoned for traditional flak weapons better suited to swatting planes. The wind cannon exemplifies ambitious but eccentric innovation born of totalitarian regimes, bankrolling fantastical superweapons. Despite the Reich's unbounded investment, the tech technology behind their Wunderwaffen wonder weapons often failed to live up to the hype. Number 6. The Bath Bomb 
Among the stranger weapons of World War II were Lytle Adams' proposed bat bombs. The dentist's 1942 plan aimed to strike terror over Japan by air-dropping cases containing over 1,000 hibernating bats, each attached to a tiny timed napalm incendiary device. The cases would open mid-flight, dispersing the bats over a 40-mile radius as they sought refuge in buildings' attics and eaves. The delayed incendiaries would then ignite, setting roofs ablaze and initiating firestorms across cities. Despite the bizarre nature of weaponized bats, the National Research Defense Committee invested in testing. Thousands of bats were captured and equipped with the tiny bombs. However, tests uncovered myriad technical problems. Premature detonations during experiments destroyed a hangar and even a general's car. The Marine Corps assumed control of the project in 1943 conducting 30 demonstrations at a $2 million price tag. But by late 1943, atomic weapons development had become the military's focus, and the impractical bat bombs were finally abandoned after $2 million and much batty frustration. Number 5. Exploding Rats among the more inventive explosive devices produced during World War II were British-made exploding rats. The UK's Special Operations Executive stuffed 100 dead rats with plastic explosives and stitched them back up, intending for the rodents to be smuggled and placed near German boilers. In theory, the unsuspecting boiler operator who found a rat corpse would toss it into the furnace, triggering a massive blast. However, the Germans intercepted the crate of weaponized vermin before deployment. Yet this failure proved serendipitous. Although the exploding rats never saw use, their discovery fueled German paranoia about Allied saboteurs, unleashing bomb-rigged rodents across the continent. Troops futilely hunted for the phantom incendiary rats, wasting resources chasing shadows. In an ironic twist, the disastrous interception amplified the exploding rats' impact. As the SOE noted, the extraordinary moral effect on German morale exceeded any benefit from actual deployment. The scheme's success lay not in destruction wrought, but in sowing fear and suspicion, though never detonated as intended. The ingenious exploding rats became an accidental psychological weapon. Number 4. Pigeon-Guided Rockets Avian assistance was enlisted to aid missile targeting in World War II, yielding one of the most bizarre experimental weapons, pigeon-guided rockets. Renowned psychologist B.F. Skinner, having trained pigeons in behavioral experiments, convinced the National Research Defense Committee in 1940 to fund Project Pigeon. His idea involved housing three pigeons in the nose cone of a missile, each viewing a projection of the ground below. A target image would be shown and the pigeons trained to recognize and peck at it. When all three pecked simultaneously, their movements would shift cables guiding the missile toward the target. Despite doubts, Skinner demonstrated the concept successfully. However, the skeptical committee terminated Project Pigeon in 1944 before any pigeons saw combat duty. Though the idea of kamikaze pigeons guiding bombs may seem absurd, it addressed the very real issue of improving missile accuracy using available technology. While pigeon homing ability inspired the concept, lacking a way to release them doomed the birds to a one-way mission. Number 3. The Krumlov the ability to shoot around corners from behind cover conveys clear tactical advantage. To achieve this, Nazi Germany developed the Krumlauf, a curved barrel attachment for the Strumweger 44 assault rifle. The infantry version had a 30-degree bent barrel comprising a 4-inch straight initial section, a 5.5-inch curved central portion, and a final 4.5-inch straight length. Aiming relied on a periscope sight. The barrel's curvature caused bullets to fragment mid-flight, limiting its range, and the stresses of curved trajectory rapidly degraded the barrel, wearing it out after just 150 to 300 rounds. Still, the innovation made sense for close quarters combat. Two variants were produced, one for infantry and a 90-degree version for firing unexposed from tanks. 
However, the Krumlauf saw limited battlefield use. Technical limitations likely outweighed its advantages. Yet the ambitious concept of shooting around corners foreshadowed future developments. The Krumlauf exemplified Nazi Germany's investment in cutting-edge weapons research, even if many far-fetched innovations like it proved impractical at the time. The alluring tactical promise ensured novel concepts found willing sponsors, although material reality often fell short. Number two, the Bob Simple Tank. The Bob Simple Tank, devised in New Zealand during World War II, is often dubbed one of the worst tanks ever constructed. With the threat of Japanese invasion looming in 1942, New Zealand lacked armored vehicles to defend itself cut off from Allied aid. Improvisation was required. Minister of Works Bob Simple spearheaded an ambitious project to domestically produce makeshift tanks using tractor chassis. Teams encased 81 bulldozer bases in sheets of flimsy corrugated iron, offering minimal protection for the eight-man crew crammed inside. For armament, six Bren machine guns were mounted precariously about the vehicle's exterior. The result was an ungainly under-armored machine named the Hedgehog that lumbered at a mere 14 miles per hour. Though 81 were built, the Bob Simple Tank never saw combat as the Japanese threat to New Zealand faded. Nonetheless, the audacious tank is remembered affectionately as an embodiment of desperate Kiwi ingenuity and determination to resist despite limited resources. The tank's amateur construction earned it a reputation as among the worst ever. Number 1. Who, me? Among the more Maldoros weapons devised during World War II was the aptly named Stink Bomb, Who Me? Developed in 1943, this putrid concoction aimed to humiliate and demoralize enemy forces through sheer stench. Chemist Ernest Crocker led research to formulate the most noxious scent imaginable from vomit, rancid butter, feces, and more. The resulting brew was intended for stealth spraying of German officers by the French resistance, hopefully dispersing crowds and sowing embarrassment. Technicians tasked with packaging the horrid liquid often ended up fouled by accidental exposure. Despite precautions, leaking and fragility remained issues. By 1944, 600 units were produced for deployment. However, the war concluded before Who Me saw action. Though scrapped for battlefield use, Crocker's work pioneered scientific study of smells and flavors, and the basic concept lived on in later stink bombs like the U.S. military's nauseating bathroom maldor used for crowd control. While never deployed, Who Me exemplified the creativity and calculated psychological warfare underlying even the most absurd wartime innovations. And for Crocker, deploying history's most repulsive odor was just another Another day at the office. If you want more of history's long-held secrets and darkest confessions, hit like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. From us at Bizarre History, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.